Welcome back to The Grind YouTube. My name is Cryptic and today I'm bringing you guys a beginner's guide to low level dueling. In this video I'm using a level 12 and a level 30 paladin. The reason I'm using a paladin is because this is the most low level duel friendly build for beginners. In this video I'll be covering lots of basics such as stacking our life, reaching max resistances, certain breakpoints that we want to achieve, our damage output, and then I'll go over what kind of gear you guys should be looking for and where we can farm it. Let's jump right into it guys. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to make note. All builds in Diablo 2 revolve around life, resistances, breakpoints, and damage. Endgame builds achieve damage through maxing their skills, or using gear with plus 2 to all skills like the Enigma, Heart of the Oak, or Shaco. Endgame builds also attempt to achieve multiple breakpoints, attack speed, cast speed, block, hit recovery, etc. And they'll achieve max resistances through their gear, Anya, and charms. Some endgame builds don't even use life. But all builds are similar, but different at the same time for low level duelers. With low level dueling we're achieving life by stacking it directly from our gear, and then attribute distribution. We also receive max resistances through various methods depending on our build. And only certain breakpoints need to be achieved dependent on our low level dueling build. And our damage is received through jewels and with specific gear and proper skill allocation. Let's start with life. But before we can start with life, we need to understand how life works. One hard point into Vitality will give a Barbarian plus 4 to life, an Amazon, Assassin, and Paladin plus 3 to life, a Druid, Necromancer, and Sorceress plus 2 to life, and all classes receive plus 1 to stamina per Vitality hard point with the exception of the Assassin who gets plus 1.25 instead. For example, if I put 25 hard points into Vitality, my Paladin receives 75 to life. Let's begin with my level 12 dueler, and then let's compare to my level 30. As a level 12 I have 301 life, which is a great spot to be at in terms of life. I have enough points into strength to wear my gear, and the rest of my points were allocated into vitality. As far as my gear goes, I have an angelic wings amulet, paired with two angelic rings. Each ring have 20 to life on them, paired with my amulet gives me 75 to life. I have boots on that give me 15 to life, and blood fist with 40 to life. These items also have other great modifications, but we'll dive a little bit deeper into that in just a moment. Why is life important? When dueling it doesn't matter how much damage we have if we can't survive long enough to dish it out. Even with max resistances, we want a lot of life so we can absorb damage for longer periods of time. In respectful duels, the opponent and yourself will not be using healing potions. The longer we survive, the more opportunity to kill them. As a level 12 dueler, it's more than possible to have max resistances. Currently on my build you can notice my resistances are not maxed. And that's because of my shield. I should be using a paladin class specific shield with 4 open sockets and a base of at least 40 to all resistances. Insert 4 diamonds into that, you're now over 75 all resistances. As a level 12 paladin low level dueler, we're looking to break one specific breakpoint, and that's faster hit recovery. Currently on my build, I have 7 grand charms with 12% faster hit recovery, paired with my blood fist which gives me 30% faster hit recovery, which brings me to 114% faster hit recovery and I only need 86% to break the 4th frame, and 200% to max. 200% is possible at level 12, however you will be cutting into your damage. If you do want max faster hit recovery, you'll need 10 grand charms with 12% faster hit recovery, blood fist with 30% faster hit recovery, 40% faster hit recovery from bleak bats form, and then 20% faster hit recovery from the nokazan relic, which is going to bring you 210% faster hit recovery, which breaks that max faster hit recovery breakpoint. However, you will be sacrificing damage. As you can see on my current build, I'm using a superior gothic plate and not blink bats form. Which means I'm getting more damage from enhanced damage jewels that I socketed into it. And you will still be able to achieve max resistances with either build by using that shield I mentioned earlier. Let's take a look how we're achieving 282 to 364 damage. First off, our main skill is going to be charge. We get 300% damage from this skill, and it also synergizes with Might, which is going to be our active aura when we're dueling. While we're wearing Might, we get 130% damage, and that 20% damage from those 10 levels that we have in there gives us an extra 200% damage on top of it. This scales from our gear that we have on, especially our weapon. Our superior war axe came with 6 open sockets and 7% enhanced damage. I then inserted 6 enhanced damage jewels into it. Along with our helmet that had 3 open sockets, we put 3 enhanced damage jewels into it, and then our body armor had 4 open sockets and we put 4 enhanced damage jewels into it. All of this adds up to our 282 to 364 damage. I could have put better jewels into our gear, but I decided to preserve that for a future video. Let's dive right into the level 30 guys. Same build as the level 12. With this build we're doing the same thing, enough points in the strength to wear our gear, and the rest into vitality. 
Same idea with our skills as well, guys. We have a couple. We have a one point to smite and a couple points into charge. We maxed out might because this is our active aura, and we get synergized on charge. We get 230% damage when using might, and those 20 hard points give me 20% damage per level. A couple extra points into charge again, get that damage up 595%. And then we have one point into Vigor as well because we do get a synergy from that. If we were using gear with uh, plus to skills, we would want to have a point into Vigor because that gives us so much more damage. I then have a couple points into some random auras like Holy Freeze and Redemption. And that is to throw off our opponent. And I'll explain that in a moment. We also have Salvation selected. You can see our resistances are a little lackluster. From a distance though, we'll be using Salvation to absorb Fire, Cold, or Lightning damage in a duel. And once we get close enough to charge, we'll switch to Might and hopefully get that one-shot kill in. You can see my damage is pretty significant with Midon, 3,307 to 5,172. I'm achieving that through all my skill points, guys, and this Ethereal Bone Snap. 316 to 468 base damage is pretty crazy with 300% enhanced damage, so this weapon is absolutely phenomenal. You can see I have 749 life. This is also important, guys, when we drop that Salvation Aura when we're going in for a kill here. When we drop this aura down to this, we're going to be taking a lot more damage from fire, cold, and lightning. So that 749 life is going to be really important. Which leads me to why I'm wearing this helmet here with 134 life in it. This was a magic helmet with base uh, 20 life with 3 open sockets. Inserted 3 perfect rubies into it to get 134 life. Using that angel set as well for more life and attack rating. And then we have blood fist for some life too. If you want to use an alternative to the angel set... You can run two Stone of Jordans and a Nokazan Relic for some Fire Res and some Hit Recovery. Those Stone of Jordans come in handy with Vigor because that synergizes with Charge. Looking back at my gear guys, I'm also using a String of Ears for that 10% damage reduction. Pretty big in a combat fight. Then we have Goblin Toe Boots and a Rattle Cage as well to kind of complement the Bone Snap. For crushing Blow on all three of these items adds up to 90% chance to proc, cr uh, to proc Crushing Blow. And Crushing Blow, the way it works is when I hit a player and it procs, I will be doing one-tenth the damage to their life. You can see my damage here is pretty high. If I hit someone for 4,000 damage and I proc Crushing Blow, not only am I doing 4,000 damage, but I am also doing one-tenth of their life as well. So this build is designed to one-shot people. I'm not using any faster hit recovery charms, even though I could. I'm using a lot of small charms with life and then grand charms with max damage and attack rating to make sure that I get that hit off and I do enough damage to kill somebody in one hit. I do have a couple faster hit recovery charms to pair with my blood fist so I do get some faster hit recovery instead of none. Something to know as well with this build, guys, is you have 96 strength. It's 96 strength to use this bone snap. I have a one strength charm inside of my inventory. If I lift it up, my item goes red. And when that happens, that means your item is strength bugged. And strength bug means when a player looks at me, they don't see my weapon because I need a charm to have enough strength to use this weapon. So they can't see it, which leads me to why I'm using random auras. If they can't see my weapon and I'm using holy freeze, they have no idea what kind of dueler I am. I could be a zeal, a hammered in, anything. So it's to throw off the opponent and kind of bait them into getting close to you so you can uh, charge them effectively, guys. When you guys are looking for gear, you want to search for things detailed to whatever level your low-level dueler is. As a level 9, you might want to find some magic rings as such. Or maybe find alternative weapons as well. If you can't find a 6 socket war axe, a rare weapon like this would be pretty good. You also want to be keeping an eye out for max damage, enhanced damage jewels as well. And minus 15% requirement. Faster hit recovery charms are also really good. These jewels are a lot more realistic than the ones that I just showed you. These are going to be a lot easier for you guys to find. These max damage and attack rating charms are a lot harder to find, but they are extremely good. These small charms with life are not hard to find at all. And you can also find these faster hit recovery charms relatively easily too. Items like this circlet, 1 to skills, and 30 fast run walk are also great items to pick up as well. Along with base items like that war axe with 6 sockets in it, or a 3 socket helmet like this one that's magic. It had a base of 20 life and it's just a great helmet. You can also just find a plain helmet with 3 sockets, or body armor with 4 sockets as well. We can farm these items inside of the secret cow level on hell difficulty. Just be careful when you're farming in there. 
if you do kill the cow king, you won't be able to run hell cows anymore. We can also find these items inside of the tombs in Act 2, when searching for Duriel. You'll be able to find lots of small charms with life, faster hit recovery, grand charms, or just gear in general with sockets that you might need. And you might get lucky and find a couple of high runes along the way. If you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps us. Thank you for joining me again, and remember to grind on.